Hello and welcome to Don't Be A Coop, the podcast with myself, Laura Crane. This podcast is all about allowing ourselves to be vulnerable, which is why I ask each guest what their number one life fair is. Or in surfing terms, their number one kook moment. I want to know how they came back from those tough moments and what they learned along the way. So with a light heart and no filter, welcome to Don't Be A Kook, the podcast. I am very honoured to welcome today's guest. You may know her as one of Team GB's most valuable gymnasts. But for me, it's the strength that this lady has shown in the last two years, which really inspires me. I'm very, very honoured to welcome Ellie Downey to Don't Be A Kook podcast. Thank you. Thank you for having me. (laughs) Pleasure. Absolute (laughs) pleasure. I'm so stoked to A, meet you in person, because I have been a little bit of a low-key fan for a while. (laughs) You know that. I've been in your DMs for a minute. But as I ask everybody on this podcast, what is your number one kook moment? Um, I'd probably say um, maybe going to the Olympic Games. It was a very valuable experience for me in many ways. Like I learned a lot because my competition wasn't very good. But then obviously like being like a pinnacle of like an athlete's career was like pretty cool. Um, so it was like there was bittersweet moments to it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's, that's a really good one and I love that because that takes so much vulnerability to say that that was a, you know, a kook moment of yours um, and yeah the, those high highs and those low lows I can only imagine mm-hmm. in <laughs> such a big deal. When I was younger I actually fancied myself as a bit of a gymnast as well which is <laughs> hilarious I was terrible couldn't even point my toes or anything but when did you know that you had a special talent in gymnastics and how did that evolve into a career? Yeah, it was a weird one for me because um, I obviously have my older sister Becky and she's like seven years older than me. So she had started gymnastics when she was seven, which is technically a little bit late for a gymnast. Um, So then I got put into preschool classes when I was like three. Um, And to be honest, from my behalf, I mean, I was three, there was no intention to go to the Olympics at that age. Um, But really, until I was about 14, I didn't really ever think about going to the Olympic Games. I just generally did gymnastics because I loved it. And I kind of grew to love it as well, because I got put into it just because my sister did it. It wasn't something that when I was a kid, I was like, oh, yeah, I definitely want to go and do that. Um, So it was more of like a, a learning and growing process for me. And then Kind of when I got to about the age of 14, the games were like two years away and I was like, do you know what, I'm doing well, Like I could have a pretty good shot at actually going. Um, and I was just really talented and was always pretty successful at competitions and stuff. So yeah, it just kind of rolled into a career, I guess. There was no major intention behind it when I initially started. So. That's so yeah. sick. That's so cool. <laughs> like most people that grow up being like, I'm going to be in the Olympics or I'm going to be an astronaut from the time. And you're like, yeah, I just kind of fell into it. I was just yeah. mad talented. Yeah. That's sick. <laughs> yeah, it's always weird because everyone's like, oh, like, what gymnast did you look up to when you were a kid? And most people normally have that one person like, yeah, I want to be like them, I want to do that. And I don't know if it's because I had Becky who was just around me all the time. I probably just took it for granted a little bit, I guess, and didn't really aspire to be anyone. I just was always talented, wanted to work hard, and that was kind of it, really. Like... Yeah, it was so, so funny. That's jokes. And how did your sister feel when you started coming up and being like, oh yeah, this is fun, I'm going to be really good at it too? How, how, was, how was that uh, invite or yeah. non-invite? <laughs> I think she was always really supportive of me. There was never any like, oh, I don't want her to be as good as me. She'd give me as much advice for competitions and anything like that. And she was always really like my second coach, like just like my second person, if that makes sense, like in the gym. Um, so yeah, she was always super supportive. And I mean, I was quite lucky that every kind of first competition I went to, like my first Europeans, my first Worlds, I went with Becky. So I kind of had a, a bit of an advantage because I had someone so close to me who had done it all before. Yeah. So. Because you were pretty young when you got like some pretty serious titles. Mm. Did that happen kind of by surprise or you already knew at that point that you had got like a relative amount of natural talent? Um, I think from probably the age of like 12 people knew I was going to be really talented. I was doing really big skills from a young Mm -hmm. age and it was mainly just uh, kind of just trying to avoid injuries so I could keep doing those skills and I did have quite a few injuries along the way understandably I was doing such big skills at a young age but um, 
I think just going into competition, I never put pressure on myself and I never wanted to get those titles. I just went and did what I could, what I've been training really. And then whatever would come, would come. And I mean, the titles and the medals just came, which was just crazy to me. Like I just really took it in my stride and tried not to put too much pressure on myself. Yeah, I love that. And also at a young age, it's hard not to put too much pressure on yourself because you don't really know what that means, I mm -hmm. think, back then. I think one of the things that I loved most, I remember seeing you, I loved watching, still to this day, my favourite thing to watch in the Olympics is the gymnastics because it's just something that I can't even comprehend, like how it's possible to do what you guys do. <laughs> um, but I always remember the thing that I loved about you was that you were just so strong. Like every, even I think the like vault and floor, yeah. like those things that like you have to be strong, I think, to be good at those anyway. But then to see you on bars was something that I loved doing when I was like younger. Yeah. And just to see how like powerful you were on the bars was like sick to me. And I always have this thing of like, oh, I would like 15 year old Laura to have had more people to look up to. Honestly, like you, that is just like pure power <laughs> and like strength. The thing that I loved about you was that you were so strong. Was there ever a time when you felt that you needed to like conform to what everybody else was doing to be, you know, more of a similar size to kind of what you'd seen everybody else being? Yeah, I know what you mean. Um, I think as I was growing up, that was the biggest challenge for me. Like I was always really strong, really powerful, and by no means am I tall. I'm like five four, but for a gymnast, that's tall. And it was kind of a weird situation. Like you would kind of either be small and quite powerful and strong and quite stocky or you'd be like tall and really lean and more like the ballet side of gymnastics and I was kind of tall and stocky and really strong so I kind of wasn't fit in the mould anywhere um, which was hard for me um, because I kind of just always felt a bit out of place and like I mean I was always going and winning medals and being super successful but I was always kind of thinking in the back of my head that I don't quite fit in and for a lot of my career, I always got told I was too big and I needed to lose weight on, and stuff like that, or drop muscle and all of that stuff, which was just like, I was 15. There was no way I could be big when I was training six hours a day. It's just physically impossible, really. Um, so yeah, that was like one of the hardest parts for me. And I could, just could never really understand it because I was, like I said, I was always doing well, always kind of delivering the medals for the team, helping the team get those medals. and. I was just like, I, I can't really understand why you won't stop going on about this when it's not really hindering me in any way. Yeah. Um, and it was really just because you didn't fit that mould. Like, And for me, I'm just glad I could do what I did in my body to kind of show like you don't need to be a certain size or a certain kind of person to be a gymnast. And I think there's a lot more variety in gymnastics now. Like look at Simone Biles, like she's yeah. like super powerful, super strong. And I guess I was kind of a little bit more lucky in the sense that I grew up in that era. Like I did have more powerful gymnasts coming through and that's kind of the way gymnastics was going compared to how it was back in the day when you had to be super thin and look like a Chinese or a Russian. Um, so yeah, I guess I was kind of lucky that I had those people around me coming up and being really successful because mm. I could kind of go back and be like, well, these people are doing a really good job as well as me. So what's the problem? Because it's clearly not a problem. Like the best gymnast in the world is super, super strong and doing all of these amazing skills because she is so strong. So there's no reason for me to drastically lose loads of muscle and become really skinny, even though it wasn't really possible. <laughs> so. Yeah, I, just, I love it because you and I have a really similar build. Like I'm, I'm proud to be strong now. I mm -hmm. used to be so, just yeah like embarrassed of like my build because I felt like more masculine mm -hmm. and even like when I came out of Love Island I had articles this you know similar saying like oh she needs to like lose a bit of weight she looks super manly and muscly and that was in the same way in how you say you found your power in 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 that being you know your strength yeah. of you know I wouldn't win these medals if it wasn't for this 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 mm -hmm. I think is really awesome and I love it a lot um Thanks. but I guess then on like the flip side of it is how do you how do you stay ready to compete all the time because your your guys' season is pretty much like year round isn't it yeah and how would you stay you stay ready to compete all the time mentally hard if yeah. someone's telling you that you're not mentally ready because mm -hmm. of how you look but how would you say you kind of balance that to to kind of stay mentally ready in the sense of believing in yourself 
yeah. and having to kind of quiet all the voices around to actually just give your best performance. Yeah, I think that's probably an advantage of doing gymnastics so young in a way because you kind of don't really think about much other than your sport and you're getting told what to do. Whereas I feel like if I was still a full-time gymnast now, I have so much to say and so many more opinions on myself and things that I just don't think I almost would have done so well because, I don't know, I've had like more mental struggles now. So there's more to kind of tackle with and kind of get over. And like, when I literally think back to my career, I actually do think, I don't know how I got through all of that because it was one competition after another, after another, after another training camp. And it was just like, there was no, ever, yeah. like in all the years that I did it. Like when I think I was a senior from 15 till I was 23, like that's seven years of like no let up. Yes, we had COVID in the middle, but it was no, like that wasn't an easy time for anybody, was yeah. it? So that was also mental stress. And I mean, I was doing big competitions from the age of 13, 14. So it's really like a 10 year of constant like stress. Like I actually do think I don't know how I did that yeah. because even now I like work for like three months. I'm like, oh, I need a break. Yeah. Like, <laughs> and I'm like, how did I do that? But at such a young age, I think you just don't really think about it. And you just, I don't know, you're just going in the gym and trying to better yourself every single day. And no matter if you're tired or you're ill, like you're still expected to turn up and do your best. And I think now that I'm older, like I look after my body and my mental well-being a lot more because I'm only 24 now, so oh, it's, it's got to last me for the rest of my <laughs> life. Whereas I think in that period, they just, that's the bad part about this sport as well. They just kind of want you to almost kill yourself for that sport, but then they're not really that bothered what you do afterwards. Yeah. So it's like, that's the hard part. Um, yeah, sorry, I felt like I went off yeah. on a massive no, tangent. No, it's, <laughs> no, it's actually, you can go straight on to the next thing because when you came out, saying that you were retiring, I thought that everybody was so shocked. But actually, it's what you've just said. I retired at 22 for the same reason. Since 12, mm. I'd been traveling the world nonstop all year round. I was yeah. exhausted by the time I was mm -hmm. 21 even. Yeah. And to make those two extra years was like really, really tough. So actually, I think there will be many people that also understood why you retired in, you know, not in the initial moment. Um, but it's just a lot like yeah. you're a kid it's all of those like influential years where you're meant to be learning like who you are and you know kind of molding mm -hmm. like okay who is Ellie like yeah and you don't really get that chance because you're like okay I'm a gymnast that's mm -hmm. it you don't get what part yeah. of it am I no no you're just that exactly. um, and yeah no I, I totally I totally see how hard that is when you retired was that something that you ever thought would happen at that age or it just kind of got to a point where you're like I have got to do this now? Um, it was a strange one for me really because it was hard to make the decision because one I had an older sister who did the sport and it just wasn't really meant to be that way it should have been Becky really retiring first for me um, but then in the same breath I think just because the whole past like two or three years had just been chaos like there was no certainty in anything like I couldn't even like think about the next day because I was like I just don't even know like what's going to happen or what's going to come it was just everything was so up and down um it was just like I got to a point I was like I've just got to be happy and like mm. just do what's right for me and I think like like I said my whole career like I didn't really plan much it was just like a snowball effect and I think I just felt really out of control with everything and like the organization were not being very helpful and being quite horrible and I was like do you know what like my values and everything I believe in doesn't align with this sport anymore and it just felt right for me to step away mm -hmm. I just knew I would be a lot happier and I had to kind of just like really isolate myself for like a whole month because every time I spoke to someone they give me oh you shouldn't retire because you're so talented and everybody who retires really regrets it and they want to go back I was like I just don't think that's going to be me though I just know I'm going to be happier and then as soon as I'd made that decision and told like my governing body I just felt like a massive weight had been taken off my shoulders and I mean I've been retired for like eight months now and I've not once thought should I go do some flips in the gym <laughs> not once no. so I'm like it's absolutely the right decision and yeah. I'm like just so much happier good for it that makes me really happy yeah. so in 2022 
you and your sister made an incredibly brave announcement, I'm just going to say, because I don't think very many young people in their sports still, myself included in this, I definitely didn't have the courage to do this, made an incredibly brave announcement, outing British gymnastics and demanding better just care and all round, yeah, just <laughs> um, respect, I yeah. suppose, for your athletes. Yeah. How did you have the courage to do this, A, at such a young age and also at such a high position in the sport? Yeah, um, I think what all we wanted to do was really just try and push the sport in the direction we could see it going in anyway. Like, we'd been super successful over those years and we had amazing relationships with the national coaches, amazing relationship with our coach. And it was just that point, I was like, we don't have anything to lose. Like and we're not really we weren't really digging anybody out either we kind of just said what had happened to us and mm -hmm. that was it like i mean we could have been a lot worse like and all we kind of were saying was we just want to continue seeing the sport go in this direction that we can see it going in and yeah at the time like we got an amazing response really yeah. like everybody was really really supportive um but i think our governing body just took it the completely wrong way and just felt like we were really like trying to get at them and i was like like i wasn't expecting that kind of reaction i thought they'd be quite grateful yeah. in a way um because it's not like we were lying like we were literally just saying what had happened and our truth and to be honest it did the complete opposite effect for us which i was just so shocked at and quite surprised and didn't really think it would go that way um, but I definitely don't regret doing it I feel yeah. like it made me stand up for myself for once in my life because I actually would always be quite a pushover and a quite a people pleaser as it mm -hmm. goes um, so I, like I said I wasn't trying to hurt anybody either um, but I feel like it did hurt people which I mean I'm not sorry for because they hurt me yeah so, <laughs> no definitely so, yeah it, it was it's a it's a hard one I get asked the question quite a lot like do you regret doing it or not and my answer is no good because I know I did it for the right reason and I hope people can just keep pushing the sport in the right direction I know in at some points it's still not going in the right direction but generally like younger younger kids that are coming up I know they're getting a lot better treatment in terms of respect and just being listened to so if I can continue making that change, then that's that's a proud moment for me in itself. Yeah, 100%. Honestly, mate, it's like I remember seeing it when uh, like it all kind of came out and thinking that is such a badass move. Not to you know, many many athletes will wait till they've retired, yeah. and then they'll make these accusations and oh, the sport kind of did me wrong in this way, in this way. For you to still be you know right up there and also doing it, I think was. Yeah, it was incredible. Like, I think it was really, really inspiring. Okay. Um, and there's there was always like a kind of part of me that just then wanted you to like go and win absolutely everything. But yeah. I also understand that once you do start speaking about these things and actually being honest, I think, with yourself too, mm -hmm. with what you've been through and especially in sports, sports are a hard thing because they know that you will just do whatever you have to do to mm -hmm. win. And yeah. I think they can, they prey on like young children in many sports, but I think, yeah, gymnastics has definitely had a bad rep for it. Yeah. But I think you guys talking about it really started like a kind of just movement, right? Like mm -hmm. lots of people then decided that they were gonna share their stories and yeah, you guys really did make such a massive difference to the younger people yeah. which is incredible is that, is that's what we wanted really we wanted younger people to feel like they can talk and like i coach gymnasts sometimes like when i've got time to at the minute um and the way they can just come up to me and be like ellie my foot hurts like i need to i don't think i should keep going on it and i'm like that's just such a big step in itself because when i was younger i'd be absolutely petrified to even go and say that to a coach and in case they'd be like, no, your foot doesn't hurt, you're lying. Like, whereas like the fact that they can come and do that and feel comfortable enough to is, I mean, it shows we are doing the right thing yeah. and the sport is slowly starting to move. In well, it's direction. also, I just think, sad that they didn't see that that was what you were trying to achieve, just a safe place for athletes. Like, yeah. that they would try and make it into something yeah. so, like, evil. You guys yeah. were literally just, this was our experience, we don't want anyone else to experience mm -hmm. this, please listen. Yeah. Like, it's yeah. wild. And 
so then two years after, or three years after really, wasn't it, that you then decided to retire. Do you think that it played, like, the reaction that they had to what you and Becky had said made it even more of a mission for you to retire? Um, I always did want to come back and really just prove them wrong. That is what I wanted to do. And in those few years, I did have a lot of injuries and we had like a major family tragedy, like my brother passed away. So it was just a really awful couple of years and they treated me pretty awfully after my brother had passed and really just didn't speak to me much. And like the response from it, it was just, it just wasn't nice. And mm. after that, I had a, quite a big injury. I snapped my plantar plate. Um, on just like an accident I literally just fell and it just popped and snapped and recovered from that and then I just decided to give it like one more like push and really try and do almost just conforming to them I just did everything they asked like literally everything um, and then it was for our world championships and then went and did trials and they basically said if I came top three on these events I'd get selected and I did exactly that I literally came out the trials absolutely ecstatic with myself that I got back after all those years of like just hell really yeah. and then I didn't get selected and then after that my mental health just I was just like I, I just felt like I was never ever going to make a team again and like that in like, itself is abuse like that's yeah. like mental abuse that's terrible yeah like that's... and like just the like I was still professional after they didn't select me I was like can you give me a reason um and they were just like you don't have enough competitions under your belt compared to these girls. I was like, well, we knew that before we started, didn't we? So why did you even let me do the trial? And it was just a big slap in the face, really. Yeah. And I was just like, this is not for me anymore. Like, not just the sport. I think it kind of ruined my love for the sport. Like, I couldn't even go in the gym after that without being in tears. Like, yeah. it was just a really messy time. And I was just like, I need time away to sit, think, really think about what I want to do now because my life feels really out of control. Um, so when I decided to retire, I actually felt really powerful in my decision. I was just kind of like, stuff you guys, I'm going to go and be happy now. Like, I don't really care about any of you anymore because none of you have cared about me for about three years. So it was just about really putting myself first and yeah. Wow. That takes immense strength, like through everything you'd been through with, the, you know, announcing then Sally News and George and then, you know, to retire and to come out and say, I'm doing this because I want to be happy. Like, I just think is incredible, mate, honestly. Like, <laughs> really, really awesome. So leading on from that, you retire, happy, just doing it for you. Ellie's world, everyone's just living in it. <laughs> um, I found really, really hard when I retired was that I now had to find out who Laura was outside of surfing, mm -hmm. which sounds really stupid, but as no, you, yeah. you know, by the age of kind of 11, it's your whole life. Mm -hmm. like, I didn't know anything else. It was just surfing. That was the only thing I wanted to do and was told that I effectively could do. So it was that. You then leave your sport at 23. Three. And you're just Ellie now. You've got all the accolades. You've got all the titles. No one can ever take that away from you. But it's not your job anymore then, let's say. So like when you go to a pub and someone says, oh, what do you do for a job? You're not, oh, I'm not yeah. a gymnastic. <laughs> I, I now do, oh wait, look. And it's that that mm -hmm. was always the moment for me, like, oh God, like, who, what am I? Yeah. Who am I? How has that kind of transition been from you from going from professional athlete to finding what makes you actually happy and mm -hmm. who you are? Yeah, um, I think like as I was still doing my gymnastics, I made sure I got some gymnastics coaching qualifications under my belt and I did my personal training qualification. Um, so I knew when I left sport, I would have something to jump straight into. Whether it was something I enjoyed or not enjoyed, I would have something to kind of start. And I knew I've always had a big passion for fitness and keeping fit and even more so now that I've retired. Um, so as soon as I kind of stopped, I was like, I'm just going to start posting some gym videos because I'm going to the gym every day. That was really the only thing that was keeping me going, like making sure I had an hour or two just going to the gym every day so my brain was keeping busy. Um, and then just started posting some videos and everyone was like, oh, this is really cool and really inspiring. So I just did a little bit more and then I'd have some people DM me like, do you do coaching? And I'm like, 
well, I don't right now, but I could. So then I just started with like two or three people, um, providing them plans and seeing how they got on. And I don't know, I felt like, I don't know, I just really enjoyed it. And seeing them come back being like, oh, like I've had two weeks on your plan. I already feel so much better in myself. And I was like, gosh, like I can really make people feel a lot happier in themselves here. Um, and then decided to start it properly um, once I'd fully announced my retirement and stuff so I could actually use my Instagram properly. Because obviously I was still like, I shouldn't really post too much because it's going to look like I'm not in the gym. Mm. I don't want people to know yet. Um, so then when I completely announced my retirement, I was like, I'm just going to go for this and see how it goes. And I was doing a bit of gymnastics coaching on the side. Um, and yeah, I'm pretty much an online coach now. And I qualified as a reformer Pilates instructor literally like a month or two ago. Um, so I'm just really enjoying being involved in fitness and like I've had some other opportunities come my way this year like after announcing my retirement on the podcast um, I got offered to do like some public speaking events. I did one with Disney and a charity for mental health called SANE. Um, went to the House of Commons and did a talk on mental health and I was just like this is crazy and I don't know I, like at the minute I'm just really taking everything in my stride and taking opportunities that come my way but every day I just make sure that I'm happy and I'm doing stuff that I want to enjoy and I'm looking after my body I'm looking after my mental well-being and yeah it's just I'm, my main focus is just being happy and trying to do things that I genuinely really enjoy every single day because I believe you need to be happy every single day like you just never know when you I know it's sad to say, but you never know when mm. one day could be your last. So, yeah. 100%. I love that. And I think that's, it's so easy to like sit there and say, isn't it? Like, oh, I'll just wake up. But it is, it's a choice. Like, mm. I think you, as much as like any other athlete, like you go through really, really dark times. And sometimes I'm not sure whether being an athlete actually... <sighs> Does it make it harder to be happier? Yeah, because I think yeah. you need more mm -hmm. to like be just base level happy as an athlete. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's it's something that you're always kind of yeah. fighting, isn't it? When you yeah. and then you come out and you're like, oh, oh, mm -hmm. actually, there's a lot of stuff to be happy about. Yeah. <laughs> and I think like I've seen so many athletes retire as well and be really unhappy in their decision and like really not know what to do with their lives, which is why I kind of I almost documented my journey on my Instagram because. I get so many people DM me now like, oh, I've just finished my sport and like just seeing you like be happy and knowing there's actually life after sport just makes you feel a lot more comfortable. Yeah. I'm like, if I can do that for one person, then that's a big tick for me because so many people told me I'd be unhappy without my sport and really just trust your gut and yeah. go with what you think is right. And I think I learned a lot about that throughout my career because I was just told what to do so much. I almost didn't think for myself, yeah. like ever. So just, I just feel really powerful being in control and just doing what I want to do. It's mm -hmm. just, yeah, I literally feel like a, it's a new lease of life. It's crazy. I love this. <laughs> I love this. This is the chat I needed. <laughs> body image. I want to talk on body image a little bit here because I think... I've always loved following you because I just see you as one of my strong girls. Like we're just out here pumping iron and all that, you know? No, but seriously, I think um, naturally we're both strong. Mm -hmm. And I think that is in this day and age, something that is now perceived as being like beautiful. Mm -hmm. And everybody I think is, you know, more focused, especially after the pandemic more on, you know, whatever you look like, as long as you're healthy, yeah. which has always been my thing. Mm -hmm. um, but I was also always not been my thing because I had an eating disorder for more than 10 years. And I think that really did root from my sport. Yeah. And this kind of a similar way I was, you know, winning all the things I wanted to win when I was younger. But there was the other side of it for me, which was the modeling side, which you kind of had to conform to both. Mm -hmm. Otherwise you weren't anything. Yeah. And it's kind of what you said earlier. And I think there's many sports which obviously it's more prevalent in and I would say probably yours and mine is mm -hmm. one of those being in a bikini or being in a leotard you've literally got nowhere to hide mm -hmm. um, so even if it's a day where you feel like a bit more bloated you're like oh god this sucks uh, <laughs> <laughs> but would you yeah like how how is that in gymnastics because I always just think it must be kind of heavy yeah I think that was also a massive relief for me when I stopped, like not having to put a leotard on every day. Because I always knew like out the gym, I was not big. 
by no means. Mm -hmm. But every time I stepped foot in the gym, I felt huge, like literally. And I think it's partly no no fault of Becky's, but I was always compared to Becky, who's five foot, a lot more petite than me. She's still really strong, but I was just like different level, taller and bigger. And obviously all my other teammates were not as tall as me and nowhere near as strong as me either. Um, so for me, stepping foot in a gym every day, I hated wearing a leotard. And I'd often push more towards wearing a crop top because I always had really defined abs. And I was like, if they can see that I've got abs, they're not gonna think I'm fat, yeah, no, no, no. like in a way. Whereas like my leotard almost hid it. Um, so I'd always try and wear a crop top, but when we went to a national center, we weren't allowed, we had to wear leotards. Um, but yeah, and I always just got told I was getting injured because I was too overweight as well. And it just always weighed really heavy on me. And like over the weekends, I'd never really want to eat. And if I did eat, I'd felt, feel really guilty because then I knew we were getting like weighed on a Monday morning. And mm -hmm. it was just like, it was a lot of pressure from at least the, I would say like the age of eight, really. Like since we started like That's national insane. camps and stuff, we would get weighed all the time. Um, and when I think about it, when I think like eight years old, like. I could never even imagine weighing an eight-year-old. Like, genuinely, like, how did people feel comfortable doing that? Yeah. I don't know. Um, but I just think, like, all those years definitely took a toll, which is why I love fitness so much now and making people feel really comfortable in their own body and their own skin. And no matter what you look like, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Like, it really doesn't matter. And I even found that since, like, becoming a bit of a Pilates instructor as well, because generally it's more tall, lean people doing it. And I found a little bit like imposter syndrome when I qualified. because I was like, oh, like I'm not quite the usual looking Pilates instructor, but I can still do Pilates really uh, bloody well. Yeah. So it's <laughs> like, it doesn't really matter. But then I just kind of have, like, I still have those thoughts and I have to push them away because it doesn't mean anything. And I just think I used to define my own worth off my body image like a lot, like even in like relationships with like guys and stuff, like I think sometimes think people don't like me because of what I look like. And I'm like, they don't, they probably don't care. They probably really don't care, but it's just in my own head. Um, so yeah. Yeah. Well, same, We're in, <laughs> we are in the same boat. And I think it's really funny. Well, actually not funny at all, but I think it's really scary that they can think that A, the weight of an eight year old, is going to make the difference to what they achieve in their life mm -hmm. and just to weigh people like I feel like that's so 2010 ago yeah like I now know after having an eating disorder for however bloody long that my weight means nothing yeah. because when the week before my period I am way heavier than the week after and mm -hmm. it can be nothing to do with what I've eaten, how much I've trained, how much I haven't eaten. Yeah. It's just like, that's our bodies. I, don't, I haven't weighed myself in probably like three years. Yeah. I know I'm roughly like s the upper end of 60, yeah. but like, I don't need to, I don't yeah. need to know. Like, it doesn't what? mean anything, for it's a number. Yeah. Like it literally doesn't mean anything. Like your body yeah. composition could be completely like majority muscle and barely any fat, which I'm probably assuming yours is, but the scales could be way heavier than someone who's like 50 kilos but has more fat like yeah. it just means nothing like yeah. it genuinely does no it's so. so true and also i think this was the most like detriment this is why i love you so much because i think the the strong sporty girls are really on the come up because mm -hmm. i remember when we were younger it was probably like that you know that age where kind of the plus size model thing kind of started because before it was literally just skinny girls mm -hmm. that I feel like I saw when I was really young and then maybe when I got to like 15 I started to see like the more curvy shape of like girl be used on like billboards and in magazines but I just felt like there was this real vast thing of like you're either stick thin skinny or you're super like curvaceous and like mm -hmm. womanly yeah. but then there was like the no in me in the middle yeah. with like abs and big shoulders and big thighs that thought like well where the hell do I fit mm -hmm. like and it was just like more masculine that was kind of what like the, mm -hmm. the boat that you were I almost pushed into and I think with you talking out in the way that you did last year uh, sorry two years ago and like just I think the rise of health and fitness and what that actually 
actually means, not yeah. what it looks like, like what it actually feels to be fit and healthy, mm -hmm. I think is awesome for like the younger us that actually get to see people like us mm -hmm. and just even, yeah, just get to choose who they want to be inspired by and not be mm -hmm. told who they have to be inspired by, I think yeah. is like really awesome. But yeah, no more weighing. You no. can't weigh people. That's yeah. not fun. No. That's not right. But even like you going on Love Island, like, because I'm a massive Love Island fan, but like seeing a strong girl like you on Love Island for me was like, wow, like they've actually got, because even still now they don't get girls like that, which frustrates me to this day. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but like just I seeing, tried. Yeah, but like you going on there was like a massive thing as well because you just, you just don't see women like that on, you do on social media now mm -hmm. for sure, but on TV, not no. not really, like, at all. Dude, that um, makes me so stoked. <laughs> <laughs> because honestly, when I went into that show, the, the, I, I just remember people kind of like asking, like, um, why are you doing it? Like, this is not you at all. And I'm like, well, if I don't do this, there's never going to be somebody for 15-year-old mm -hmm. Laura to look up to on yeah. TV. Like, she's always going to think that she's ugly because she can't curl her hair or do mm -hmm. her makeup or because she's not like a size four mm -hmm. and that makes me really happy that yeah. you were that for me and I was that yeah. for you. So <laughs> <laughs> um, in sport, well, this is kind of like boundaries. I'm like really into boundaries at the moment. Mm. <laughs> That's like my thing. Um, or like trying to understand what my boundaries are and where I don't have any, which mm -hmm. is in a lot more places than I figured. Yeah. <laughs> but I think growing up in sport kind of forces you to just not have any mm -hmm. <laughs> and to like just if you do have them just to kind of ignore them um how has it been for you since retiring and finding this like new powerful just i am me ellie and figuring out boundaries like how is that just relationships whether it's like sport whether it's family like how is how how are your boundaries mm -hmm. doing right now ellie yeah it that is a good <laughs> question like I think because I'm so on this like self-development, mental health, be at peace journey. Mm -hmm. <laughs> My boundaries are quite. Smart, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> like literally, I just don't have time for anyone's like crap. Like, and I know that sounds bad because I feel like at points you, you have to take some because otherwise you're gonna end up in your own bubble forever. <laughs> like literally, but I don't know if just like my mental capacity is quite. Like I'm take, I kind of feel like now it's quite small after all the crap I've been through. Like, if I kind of have like one big obstacle come my way, I do feel like my head goes, Pff, and then I really have to like reset and like just remember like to keep my peace like safe. <laughs> no, I like and, that. Yeah, it's it's a it's a hard one. Like I try and push myself as much as I can, but then there's some boundaries where I'm just like, no, like pull back, like remember we're on a journey here and you've got to keep sane. Yeah. No, no, it's yeah. no, no, trust me, I get it. <laughs> I'm like, no, I'm, this is a boundary day. Yeah. Sometimes no, but today is a boundary day. You have stepped too far. Yeah. Um, that's jokes, I like that. Got a bit more free time now. Just live it, living out there, just living it up. Um, <laughs> What have been some like new things that you found that you've had like more time to do that you didn't have time when you were in mm. your gymnastics era? Definitely say seeing my friends. Yeah. Like I'd probably see my friends maybe once a month. Other than like the people who I'm training with, which were obviously like teammates slash friends, which if you're in the gym that much together, you don't always want to hang out that much mm -hmm. together. <laughs> um, yeah, I must see my friends like three times a week now. Like, because we all live in Nottingham, we'll go to the gym together. Um, like, in the week, we'll go to the cinema or go shopping or just go for a coffee. Like, just, yeah, definitely seeing them more, which is, like, then just the nicest thing because we just are so open, talk about anything. And, like, whether we want to deep chat or just chat about absolute rubbish, it's just nice to connect with them a lot. Yeah, that's yeah. cute. I like that. I mean, yeah. Connecting with friends. I actually didn't realise how important like just a community of people mm -hmm. around you is yeah. until I moved home this year as well. But then I also feel like you prob you get this probably even more because you're from Nottingham and it's a, not a huge, huge place, but it's yeah. big enough that you're like not going to know every single yeah. person. But I'm pretty sure like 90% of people know who you are. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> how is that dating? Um, 
it's <laughs> it's not <laughs> I'll do the same bro. Yeah. <laughs> it's not the easiest um like it depends it's like some people either you could go on a date and they're like super excited that it's you or they're like completely not bothered and then they think you're a big head if you bring it up in any way it's like yeah. it's really hard to like that's your insecurity yeah. bro yeah <laughs> and like a lot of people I like to give people my Instagram before I meet them because I don't like giving out my number. So I would give them my Instagram, then they'd be like, oh God, like, who are you? It's like I'm a dating profile, I have nothing that says that I literally put like I'm a PT and nothing involving any Olympics, gymnastics, nothing. Um, but then if I give them my Instagram, they're like, oh God, like, who's this? So they either feel really intimidated or just assume I'm gonna be a big head yeah. about it. So it's like, it's hard, it's hard. <laughs> yeah, it is, uh, mate, it is so hard. Doesn't get any easier. No. I've got no, I have no advice for you. Um, but yeah, no, I just think it's interesting like how every, well, how we have to do it these days. Like, oh, do I give them my Instagram before? Do I let them? Mm -hmm. like, it's just so weird. Like, yeah. You can't just meet now. No. That's so strange. Which is, yeah, which is hard. Yeah. Or if I like go like on a night out and I meet someone then they normally only come up to me because they know who I am. So then that's almost a bit of a turn off for me. Yeah. Because I'm like, oh, they'll be like, you're that gymnast. I'm like, yeah, I used to be. Like, <laughs> not anymore. <laughs> and it's just a bit like, so, <laughs> like after that. So yeah, it's a, it's a sticky situation. <laughs> yeah, it's true, dude. That's a, it's, it's definitely a whirlwind, <laughs> that's for sure. In the whole journey of like, I guess, the gymnastics era of you, do you have, reg do you regret it? Um, as a whole, no. Um, but like we were talking a little bit earlier, like it's the swings and roundabouts you have to kind of deal with, like we wouldn't be here now having this conversation if I hadn't done my whole career and some of the stuff that has been amazing that I've done this year, I wouldn't have done that either. Um, but then it's like, you have demons to fight off every day because of some experiences you had in that sport. So it's swings and roundabouts, but as a whole, I, I don't think I regret it, no. Good, that makes me happy, <laughs> at least that. I, Cause yeah, it's easy though, isn't it? To just only remember the bad things, I suppose, yeah. in everything in life. Mm -hmm. Like if I think back to school, like I'm sure I had some really lovely memories, but I regret going to school. Yeah, I didn't like <laughs> school either. Like everyone's like, school's like the best time of my life. I'm like, I don't know if it was just like hard work because it felt like I was doing two jobs. Like I was like gymnastics and then that, and gymnastics was the priority for me because I was never very academically smart. So I had to work really hard at school. So it felt like another, like a chore. It wasn't something I enjoyed. Whereas I think when you talk to your friends, they're like, oh, I enjoyed it so much because I was with my best mates every day and we had a laugh and we did this and we did that. And I'm like, I just went in, did my work and left. Like that was kind <laughs> of like how I treated school. So everybody has their different experiences, right? And mm -hmm. I think now that I've retired from gymnastics, I can generally look back and think all of like, all the things I achieved and doing it with literally my best mates on these huge world stages is just, crazy and you literally will not appreciate it until you're finished and like I literally think like the bulk of my career from when I was like 15 to I was 20 oh my god like how did I do that like such a young age yeah. and took it all in my stride and went to every competition was a badass did my performances and then went on to the next mm -hmm. like it is yeah it's crazy when you like think about it like that. Yeah, well it's also in, in, in many ways, good ways and bad ways I see, it shaped you to be who you are right now and as much as, you know, I think there's not many people at your age that are as like hardy, you know? You've been through some stuff mm -hmm. and you know, even now in life I think when, you know, I don't think life gets easier. I don't think it necessarily gets harder, but you just get stronger, right? Yeah. And like every experience you have makes you more prepared for the next one. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, that that's childhood sports people. <laughs> I don't know what you'd call them, <laughs> but it's like it's a breed of their own, yeah. I think, really, because we, we just don't have that, you don't have that ability to be like, oh, I can't. Mm -hmm. It's like you just yeah. know you can, exactly. you can make it through this. Oh, I know yeah. I can make it through this. And yeah. um, 
I, yeah, actually I rem think that was one of the times when I, I don't know when it was, I think the first time that you like post obviously uh, losing Josh and it was honestly mate like horrible to see and I don't you didn't even I'd never even met you at that point but just seeing like your whole family like coming together and like that that was the biggest thing ever mm. and how you have now come back from that and still to see be here opposite you sitting here so strong and like almost unfazed like, I don't know how I would deal with that situation that you've been put in and would you say that your hardships have made those things easier in um, the sense of having to deal with kind of like grief and I mean yeah. not that that will ever ever be easy but yeah, yeah. I think nothing kind of compared to that like genuinely because it was such a shock as well it's not like he was ill and you knew it was going to happen yeah. it was just boom like world flipped upside down um and I think I just have to be grateful for my family like we're I was one of five so still I'm one of five um but we all just came together and really looked after each other and that's all we could do really like there was no there was nothing that would make even now like I find it really difficult to comprehend like and I just don't think it will get easier no. um well it does get easier like I can much I can't talk about it as much now as I could when it first happened yeah like, when it first happened that's all I wanted to speak about like Josh all the time whereas now I just kind of imagine he's still living in the city with his girlfriend that's kind of just how I see it now um but I do feel like he's around me a lot and like when I'm like struggling I do feel like his energy is like here in some way. And I know I know that it is. So. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. And for sure he is. Mm. Definitely. And I saw that you um, now do some work with the British Heart Foundation, which is incredible. Yeah. Yeah. And do those kind of, you know, working for charities and doing all these things and now you have, it almost feels like you needed to retire to do all these other incredible things that you're now doing. Um, does that make you feel in another way fulfilled that you couldn't have felt almost before like yeah. this purpose is yeah. kind of yeah I think like just everything since I've retired like I'm just trying to make almost all the mistakes not that Josh was a mistake because it was just out of the blue but like we didn't know anything about heart conditions like literally nothing so making it aware to people how rare they are because they are very rare yeah. like when I saw the stats I was really shocked and just like how important it is to be CPR trained, mm -hmm. know where your local like defibrillators are, how to use them, because I didn't know any of that stuff. And like since then I've done like a course on CPR and know how to use a defibrillator and we got one in our gymnastics facility straight away. Sick. I made so sure that happened. And like, even like if I ever go to a gym and notice there's not a defib around, I'll like speak to the receptionist and be like, you probably should have one like yeah. whether they go and do it or not but then that makes me feel like i've done my job and do posting about it on social media just so more people see it regularly because yeah. it's so important and then again like relating to like my fitness side of things now just trying to help people feel better in their body and feel good about themselves and just all the things that i felt like i didn't have at times yeah i want to be that for people which again, can get hard because then I'm trying to do everything all at once and then I tie myself out. So I have to try and pick and choose my battles. And, boundaries. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> pick my boundaries <laughs> and take them on. Um, but yeah. Maybe a year and a half after I'd retired from surfing, I started to really, really miss it, I suppose. And I don't know if it was, I missed just the ease of knowing exactly what I had to do every single week because it had been the same for like mm. 10 years. Yeah. Um, and it's like comfortable, isn't it? Like, yeah. you know, okay, I go gym, I do my warm up, and then I go train, and then mm -hmm. I've got a competition and this and whatever. Do you miss gymnastics? Not yet, no. Um, which I thought I would maybe a little bit more than I do, but I don't know if it's just because I'm keeping myself so busy and I'm so happy and content in what I'm doing that it doesn't really cross my mind. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like if I say if I was like, I don't know, just working on nine till five that I didn't enjoy and then 
I wasn't getting any fulfillment in my day, then maybe I would miss it because I'd be like, oh, I'm not doing something that I used to enjoy. But I think because I've found a passion for something else now, um, I don't miss it. I think I missed like when we go we used to go to training camps and that team environment and like being excited for like a competition coming up and then doing really well at a competition with your teammates. That's what I miss. And if I watch a competition, I'm like, weird that I'm never going to have that feeling again. But then at the same time, I can watch competition and be like, oh yeah, yeah. next day now. Like, <laughs> yeah. I don't like to sit and dwell about it too much. Yeah, no, that's really good. Yeah. And also, I guess gymnastics is not really like, I really missed surfing because it was the lifestyle I was living around it. Yeah. But I guess gymnastics not like, oh yeah, I'll take my beam down to the beach and do like, <laughs> yeah. a couple of flips. Yeah. Like, it's, uh, yeah, I guess it's all relative, isn't it? It's like, mm -hmm. it's like the lifestyle and all the things that go around it, yeah. isn't it? But like you said, you miss the team and like mm -hmm. the competing side of some yeah. yeah, no, that's really interesting. Yeah, imagine, take me beam down beach. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you had a nice scenic training yeah. facility. Mine was like in a very dull gym at times, very cold because the heating would break 24-7 and yeah, it was, it was... Wait till you see my winter this year, you won't want to change. Okay, <laughs> that is true actually. This winter's going to be horrible. <laughs> um, okay, final question. You're sitting across from the table right now. I'm Ellie, 15 year old. What one piece of advice would you have for 15 year old Ellie? Um, to make sure you're happy every day and enjoying what you're doing. Nice. I like that a lot. Thank you so much for no, being thank you for on the me. podcast <laughs> and for everything that you're doing. Thank you.